I just, uh, okay, thank you. Um, yeah, well, welcome to everybody, uh, Columbus Free Press. Uh, this is uh, January 8th, 2022. Um, an important year in the, uh, the history of the United States, probably. I, we may think it's just another year, but um, this may be a very important year. Um, we'll see. Uh, this year, this week, we um, we are, are memory me, reminding ourselves of things. So I just wanted to let us remind ourselves of many things. Okay, um, like um, I'm just, forgive me for I'm doing technology on myself here. I think that's got it. Yeah, there we go. Uh, a person that was very important in the world Anglican Church, um, but also for the world in general, uh, Desmond Tutu, uh, we, we, we lost. Uh, the world has lost a very important um, leader, morally, politically, spiritually, anywhere you want to talk. Um, his humor, we got to keep that humor, laugh in the, laugh in the face of repression, laugh. Oops. He did, and let's try to do that as we can. Um, so, yeah, we, we, we're we going to have some speakers tonight. Um, as this is becoming a, a uh, what is this, our second year? Stephen, how, how many, we've done this year, year and a half now, two, three maybe now? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Can't count since COVID, right? Yeah, so it's getting long. It's getting long. Um, We're on Facebook Live to take. I'll yeah, check it. Yeah, I just saw that. So, we, yeah. So we want to make sure everybody, when, if, and when you're speaking, and you know, this is a salon. It's uh, not a webinar. It's not a uh, info uh, uh, graph, whatever you want to call it. Um, we are a salon, so we're trying to be in in, in community with each other. Um, but we're going to have three speakers tonight um, to sort of set. Our agenda and our and our agenda is 2022, right? What, what is the community of free press, the Columbus Institute of Contemporary, Contemporary Journalism, expecting to be doing in 2022? We we have long history, long history of what um, we know to do, and um, so um, uh, <clears throat> we we'll, we do have Mariam Asai, is it? I hope I'm pronouncing it right. If not, she'll she can correct me, please, and, and, and do it immediately if you'd like to. Uh, but she's with the Ohio Immigrant Alliance, and uh, Lynn Tremonte uh, are going to show to uh, update us on some things that are going on. And she's she's got a great project, and I'm very excited to um, hopefully hear more about. Uh, she's trying to get uh, stories. Um, well, she, I'll let her talk about it, about immigrants' families and where uh that have been that have been deported um here you go that uh, time for uh uh new year's resolutions right so here you go this is one shared by a colleague of mine i i thought it was sort of sort of, sort of silly but i like it <laughs> silly like you know um but we don't like quitters you know america doesn't like quitters so so my um, uh, you're the, I believe, the only speaker on right now that we have scheduled. Do we have others on yet, Stephen? Do we, uh, Jessica on yet, or Lynn, or Mariam? Do you know if Lynn's coming on? Uh, I'm not sure if she's coming. I just texted her, but no response yet. But okay. I'll be happy to talk you on feel, behalf of the Ohio Immigrant Alliance. You feel comfortable to head on then? Okay. So why don't you each start with you to not to, to, to burden your time if you need to go somewhere other place. You can stay on as long as you'd like to. You can come and back to whatever salon you want to come back to. We're doing them these every month, second Saturdays every month. So uh, why don't we let you go ahead and correct my pronunciation of your last name, please, if I was wrong. Thank you so much. So good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Maria um, i I'm used, I'm used to Sai because of the English um, it's pronounced, but it's okay. I'm used to it. No, no, thank you. See, see, thank you. 
Thank you. So I'm here tonight on behalf of the Ohio Immigrants Alliance. I'm so happy to be here. Um, when Lynn told me about the meeting, she said there's a, a group of very progressive journalists that are having this meeting. And I was like, yay, I want to be part of it. <laughs> so thank you. Um, so like you mentioned, we have great projects at the Ohio Immigrants Alliance. Um, the main project that kind of created the one we're working on right now is called Reunite US. The idea was to push for advocacy with the Biden administration. So the families that were separated during Trump administration could be reunited with their families back here in the US. Uh, it's not just families, it's single young men who came here and um, ask for asylum after running away from war zones and horrible conditions in their countries. So Lee reached out to me uh, to work with her. It's been a year now uh, on this project because she thought I would be a good person because of my background. Um, I was an immigrant. I'm still an immigrant, even though I was naturalized a couple of years ago. And it was very touching to me because my husband came as an asylum seeker in the US. So automatically I said, yes, I'm gonna work on this project. So we started interviewing people that we knew and the word has spread all around the world. And today we have interviewed 258 people who were deported by previous administrations, not just Trump, but previous administrations. And we believe that they were unfairly deported. So that's why we're fighting for them to, today so they can be reunited with their families. Uh, some of them went to Canada because Canada was the safest country for them. They didn't wanna to be too far from their children and wives and families, so they went to Canada. And some of them just went to different countries. 75% um, of the people that I have interviewed are from Mauritania. Uh, my husband is from Mauritania. He left Mauritania in 1989 after a genocide that happened that killed almost half of his family. So that's why, that was one of the reasons why I really wanted to work on this project. So when we interviewed all those people, we saw that many of the people who were deported were able to reach out to other people who are living in Mauritania in difficult conditions. So there's a word that we use for different countries where people are not recognized at, as citizens of those countries and we call them stateless, they, they're stateless. They, there's a stateless um, fact that when they go home, those countries because of, of race don't recognize them as citizens of those countries. So if I go too fast, please let me know because I'm a fast speaker and I have an accent. So I'm really hard to understand, I apologize. <laughs> so, um, those people, we have a man called Seydou Sao who was detained in Ohio for a very long time. He was deported back in August and he left his wife and two children. So we had that idea of working with him and interviewing people who were deported and who were in Mauritania and weren't recognized by the Mauritanian government. So what happened in 2011, the government of Mauritania did a census and purposely did not register the black people. So in that census, only people from a Arabic background mainly are registered. Everybody else, proof of citizenship was destroyed by the government. No one can get a birth certificate. No one can get any records that can prove that they, were, they are citizens of Mauritania. They're forgotten. So we're calling them the ghosts of Mauritania. So that's when we had that idea of creating a documentary. And in that documentary, those people who are state stateless and identityless, who are persecuted by the police, those people who don't have anywhere to go, those people who can't have identification papers are talking about their stories. They can't get married legally. They can't get birth certificates for their children because they don't have birth certificates. They can't enroll their kids in the schools. And even though some of them have diplomas like PhDs in countries like America and France, they can't work. They can't survive. They can't have a decent life in Mauritania. So the idea for us was create a documentary that will talk about 
those people who are forgotten by the Mauritanian government. So also with the Ohio Immigrants Alliance, we are working with the Mauritanian Network for Human Rights, and we are pushing for TPS for Mauritania, doing an advocacy for that. And while we were working with that uh, on that project, we found out that the DHS has recognized the use of the word statelessness, which for us is a big step because back then the immigration judges were using documents from the State Department who was using documents from the United Nations um, the United Nations people who were in Mauritania saying that Mauritania is a safe country for black people to return, which was false. Mauritania has never been a safe country for black people. It's still not a safe country for black people. I have interviewed people who are hiding right now in Mauritania. We have stories from them. They are hiding because they're afraid of walking in the streets because they are black. So that's a documentary that we're working on right now. Um, we have interviews for people, we have videos, we have audio recordings, we have pictures, we have testimonies of people who are persecuted in Mauritania. So we're pushing and pushing, and hopefully the Biden administration is going to do something about it. Hopefully the reunification process is going to work for more people, because so many people were deported. Uh, we did a story in the Columbus Dispatch, and we talked about... Um, people who were separated, many people in Columbus were deported back in Mauritania. And we did a story in uh, Truth Out also about um, Mauritanian people deported back in those hostile situations. So um, thank you so much, guys, for everything that you do. Uh, we thank the press for pushing and showing the stories of people because we only have our dedication and our voices but I think that the press is a perfect ally because you guys are showing what we can show. We only can write, but you guys have that access to the public that we don't have. So thank you so much for all you do. If you have any questions, guys, please, please feel free to ask me. And thank you so much for having me tonight. Yes, if you, anybody's got any questions, you wanna raise your hand, please mark your muted. Do you have any questions? I just wanted to thank you, Ms. C, that uh, your your contribution, that, that the, the project that you're talking about is 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 a lot of what people are doing are these stories. And, and the stories are really proving to be very powerful for um, uh, to, to describe a, a policy that needs to be created and to be thought how to work right. So I appreciate your, your effort on that. Um, yeah. The, there, the the movie um, Martinian, uh, 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 I forget it right now, but that, that there's much work being done. Um, and can you give us a quick, quick geographic? I know, I know, but where what you're talking about is happening on this this planet? So Mauritania is situated in West Africa. In the north, in north of Senegal, uh, between Senegal and Morocco, it's on the coast of the west of West Africa, and um, the population is mixed. So there's Black and Arabic Mauritanian. We call them Baden Mauritanian, but they're the majority of Mauritania. And um, the Black people, the Black communities in Mauritania are diverse. So what I mean by that is, for example, I'm Fulani. And there's many Fulanis in Senegal. There's Fulanis in Mali, which is a neighbor country, in Chad, in Niger. There's Fulanis in 13 countries. But in Africa, we know that it doesn't mean anything. If, I, if, if my parents are Fulani and I was born in Mauritania and they were born in Mauritania, uh, that, make me, that makes me a Mauritanian citizen. And if I have all the paperwork to show it, I, I don't have anything to say. This is my paperwork. But, government has the history of being racist. There's protests in the country. There were protests on November 28th. The Mauritanian government did in 1980, 1990, I'm sorry, they killed 28 military, uh, military guys, people in the army to celebrate the 
anniversary of the genocide that happened in 1989. So here on November 28th, there's protest. And this one in particular in 2021 was really bad because the police started to uh, hit people and hurt people. So they ran away to Senegal. So Mauritania is, um, is, is a country that has a really bad history in terms of, of racism. Yeah, the northern, I'm not, yeah, the northern uh, part of Africa has been, well, a whole continent of Africa has has such a colonialist uh, experience, the northern especially. Um, your your current story collecting, the, the process, I'm sort of interested in the process. How, how are you collecting stories? I know you started with the one man's, but then you you now have done 285, I thought you said, or something like that. I, I, I didn't quite hear the number, but yes, please. So we, we started with the people who were working with the Ohio Immigrants Alliance. Mm -hmm. He was working with people who were being deported because they were doing that advocacy with Butler County Jail and Morrow County Jail. So that's how we got in touch with them. It was just a couple of people five or six, I'll say, but today we interviewed 258 people, but 75% of that are Mauritanian people. Thank you. Yeah. Not, not all of them are in Mauritania because they're afraid of the persecution, mm -hmm. but most of them are, and we are talking to those people. So the only platform that we can use because of technology is the WhatsApp application. That's the only technology that we have in emails. Guy Seydou was deported. He's interviewing people and sending us big videos that we're putting together. And it's in Fulani. So I translate the whole video. So we have many, many footage of people who were just deported and are just talking about their conditions. Thank you very much. Hi. Anybody else have, uh, Steve, have you seen anybody uh, have? Is, I, I, uh, questions, uh, answers, yeah, I'm not whatever. seeing anybody raising their hand, but I had a question uh, right yeah, to the please. north of that. There's been quite a bit of reporting on democracy now about Western Sahara and Morocco and how uh, the Trump administration ceded essentially under agreement to uh, engage Israel somehow, Western Sahara. So Mauritania is right underneath Western Sahara. So you have Morocco to the north, Western Sahara, and then you have Mauritania underneath. And it, it just seems like the U.S. with their bases all over Africa are trying to strong arm the country in the, uh, the fight against liberalism. And, and this is an ongoing thing here in the United States as well. I mean, the, the whole effort of our uh, policy in the past, at least the past four years, was to undermine this quote unquote liberalism but essentially what they're fighting is the uh, goodwill of men amongst men and women and uh, the social fabric of, of uh, the advancement of society. Uh, and, and we see that playing in what you're talking about, Mauritania. So. Yes, thank you so much. And the thing about what you're talking about policy, so when people are deported, they either go back, they travel with a travel document. So either they have a passport or they have a laissez-passer, which is a document provided by a consulate or an embassy. So those people cannot travel with a document, with a travel document. So for the Mauritanian people who don't have a passport, ICE will reach out to the consulate. And once they get the laissez-passer, you can see, because we, we have copies of those laissez-passers. So those laissez passes says, this is a person who was here in the United States, they're being deported, this is a citizen of Mauritania, and it's from the consulate. So they have that paper from their government who says, this is a citizen of our country, he's coming home. But when they get to the airport, they get detained in very horrible conditions. They get questions, they get interviewed, they get beaten sometimes, locked up in some very, very bad, horrible prisons. And then they say, say to them, well, you can't be here because you're not a Mauritanian. We can't find your records. Well, there's no records because you guys have destroyed all the records of the black people 
from 2011 and 2015. So there's no records. So that's a little contradiction that we see. And it's happening not just for Mauritania, for anybody who's coming from a country where there's racism, like in Mauritania. When we did our meeting with DHS, we pointed out that this is happening. You guys are getting travel documents from the embassies and from the governments. But then when they get there, they're telling them that these, you guys are citizens of this country. So we found out and we've heard that many of those documents were fake. That ICE is delivering fake documents. Now, is this true? Is this not true? We don't know because obviously we can't talk to the Mauritanian government, but this is what's happening right now. And it's so unfair to those people. Now, you're speaking with folks that have been deported. Can we get even before that, the pre-deportation, when you're detained, when, when people have been detained, I've been in Butler County Jail. I, I know the jail. <laughs> Moro is another place that they were doing. Um, not pretty places, not places that you want to stay in many times and, and families shouldn't be there and, and, and the whole deal. Um, I know most mostly it's now developing differently, but immigration first starts with the young males because they want to get going and, and, and figure out the world, you know, whatever the reason, whatever the reason is a push and pull a lot of times. Um, we, we came to know the Alliance first when, when Lynn came to us to do an, an action around when COVID first was hitting out and, and the uh, concern for the folks that were in the detentions. How, can you describe that situation a little bit again and where we at with that at this point? Do you know that as well? So I started working with the Alliance at that very time but I know you mentioned, uh, I believe it was Moro County had a hundred percent infection with the detainees, including the immigration, the immigrant detainees. So like you mentioned, it was a very horrible place that they are still talking about. Um, there's a lawsuit that's going on against ICE regarding a device that ICE officers are using on, um, on people who are, not who doesn't want to get in the plane. So it's called, they call it the wrap. It's a very horrible device where they tie the person and they can't even move a finger and they're tied up for the, for the time of the flight. Sometimes it's eight hours. So when we talk to those people, the trauma started in detention where there's a lot of racism. There's a lot of Muslim people who need to pray and they're not allowed sometimes to pray. There's a lot of people who had COVID and needed medical attention and did not get it. Some people will say that they, they give them dog food, they eat dog food, and they're detained with people who, and it, it, when you look at it from a cultural aspect, they, they will tell us, well, I was detained with someone who killed five people. How come I'm not a criminal? You know, I was just here to seek asylum and I have kids and I worked 30 years in the United States. And now you lock me up with a criminal and I did nothing wrong. I was working and paying my taxes. So that's the whole big picture in Ohio. We had that in Butler and Moro County. Now, um, I believe Butler has lost a contract to detain ICE immigrants. So they're not uh, welcome. I see Connie's shaking her head. So maybe I'm right. So they're not, they don't have any ICE detainees anymore. Thank God. But when you hear them talking about it, like grown men crying about the conditions, they're saying, well, they feed us dog food. The food is disgusting. It's freeze, like it's frozen. And that's what they feed us. And it's just horrible, horrible. Thank you, Ms. C. Yes, that, that, that's, that was what, that whole experience was what introduced us to where you're you, thank you for updating us on this and this new project is very important um and hopefully uh we as as uh journalists and and friends of journalism uh would like to help uh increase that capacity of creating a story with stories of folks that are going through detention deportation the whole deal, even before you even get to that, that the fear of being all the D's, you know, the fear of the D's, um, what people are living that, you know, families in general, they've come, 
like most of us, most of us on this this call right now, have come to make our lives better. You know, come here, our families historically historically have come here to make our lives better. Um, or <laughs> we're escaping things. <laughs> one of the two. One of the two. Uh, or we're dragged here. Um, had no choice. Uh, but we're all here now. As, as someone used to say, we all came here on different ships, but we're all in the same boat now. So we need to um, thank you, Myron, uh, for your story and stay with us as long as you'd like to. Jess, I see you joined us. So this is part of our discussion that today. We're, we're, we're gonna bring some heavy repression that's going on in, in the, you know, we, we all think American dream and everybody's coming for the American whatever. There's major repression going on in our society, and and we need to think. I, I'm just going to show this up for a second. We need to start thinking of a new world that's possible, a new way of looking at things. You know, this was something down at Santa Fe uh, uh, Museum that my brother just sent me recently. Um, so we are going to be a challenging system. We have been. Uh, we, we need to do a lot of self-care for ourselves as well. We are in, in a situation that 2022, there's major decisions that are going to be coming down, um, policies that are going to be made. Uh, Jessica has been helping Stein. She's been helping uh, sort of keeping the, the voice public and going uh, and doing other things and trying to press the agenda on healthcare access, in particular abortion. Um, and so I'd like to, her to sort of say where she wants to start and then sort of end up where she sees 2022 and where, where, where we at. What, what, give us a sort of a, a barometer of, of the politics now. And, and, and Ms. C, Cy, Cy, please uh, uh, jump in when you want to as well. So you guys are sort of our speakers today. I don't think Lynn is on today, right? She's hey, everyone. Not. I'm Jess. Um, yeah, yeah, Jess. I'm from Columbus, Ohio. Uh, I use the Women's March platform to try to organize um, local people who would like to mobilize against um, abortion restriction. And I know I'm pretty sure everybody's probably up to date with the trigger bans that will close down clinics in Southeast Ohio, I believe. And um, I organize with a group of five other women and we work together and try to mobilize whenever we can. And it's pretty much grassroots, but as far as 2022 goes, if SCOTUS rules against Roe v. Wade, abortion will be inaccessible in Ohio. And with poverty rates and the fact that I think it's 70% of our legislators are Republican, even though Ohio is almost 50-50 down the map. So it's not like we're actually a red state, but we've been gerrymandered so much. And it's not even just um, abortion bans. There's it's the same few legislators. I mean, it's the whole party, but it's the same few legislators that keep introducing more and more oppressive bills into Ohio legislator or legislation. So there are anti-trans bills, anti-protest bills. There are, you know, you don't require a permit to carry a gun now. And um, for people who love to cite the constitution as much as they want for freedom of speech, they sure don't give a damn about freedom of choice or, you know, we are granted, we're allowed to mobilize and group together. We're allowed to protest. We have that freedom, but they're trying to take those away. And it, you're right, it is, it's beginning to feel a lot like fascism. And I think in Ohio, the problem is, is a lot of people don't educate themselves on what that means. Whether you are, are okay with abortion or not, you shouldn't be okay with stripping somebody else's rights away, especially when we don't have social programs for these kids, when foster care systems here are broken and it's basically a pipeline to prison. And, you know, per the Geneva Convention, forced pregnancy is a war crime. It's a war crime. 
So why are legislators pushing to do that to citizens of their own state and their own country? And then with the 14th Amendment, which was used to overturn Roe versus Wade, or not overturn, to put Roe versus Wade into law in the first place when it went among or before SCOTUS, they used the 14th Amendment and that was written because as sad as it is, I'm, we all know our country's history is rooted in racism and slavery. It was used so that black enslaved people were viewed as people. And it says no, por no person born or naturalized, so born. And these legislators do not care about the unborn. But my question is, is in the 14th Amendment, it says born. These are not people who are born and they should not take precedent over the lives that are already here. And we all know what happens to children who are born into families who don't want them. They're abused, they're neglected. You know, sometimes they're even killed because they're, they're not wanted, they get passed around. Foster care here is a joke, and this is coming from somebody who was a product of the foster care system. If, if they were really pro-life, they would introduce comprehensive sex education. They would make birth control accessible. They still teach abstinence in school. And I'm sure we all know teenagers aren't going to abstain just because that's what you teach them in school. They would introduce more social programs. They'd make childcare more affordable. And they don't do any of that because it's not right to life. It's not, it's not pro-life, it's forced birth and it's pro-control. And that's the sad thing of it. And nobody understands how this misogyny <clears throat> um, affects everyone. It hurts everyone. Because I believe it was at the protest on the second, there was a sign that said if men were the ones to get pregnant, you could get an abortion at every corner and your 10th one would be free with a punch card. And that is the truth. It's all rooted in a patriarchal society and it hurts everyone. It doesn't just hurt the women that you're restricting access to. It creates more and more broken children. Sorry, that was a long-winded rant. Right. Does anyone have any questions? Jessica, thank, no, first of all, thank you for your leadership and, and, and the other uh, four compatriots that you, you mm -hmm. have worked with and keep doing that work. And, and so 2022. The, yes, this men, you're right. I'm sorry. I'm still working on trying to, yes, correct. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. You're good. You're good. Um, 2022, we are faced with exorbitant uh, 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 attacks in a way, but also the, the, the deck of the cards are d stacked in a lot of different ways. You know, we got Supreme Court in Ohio, Supreme Court cases going forward with many of our friends. We heard a little bit about that last month. Um, and they're moving forward uh, to see about fair elections and fair districts. Um, we have constantly, Free Press has been adamant about uh, protecting the, the right to, to, to vote. Uh, um, and so there's major uh, potential for legislation nationally, probably not in Ohio, as you say, the, it, the, 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 the structure of General Assembly right now is pretty miserable. And I don't know if any of it, I mean, people, uh, Sandy, you've been down there. I don't, I don't see Pat or any others. But you guys been down there. You sort of know the toxic mentality that's down there right now, and it's you don't see much coming out of there. Maybe we need to just contain it, encircle it, and so and sort of like uh, me, me, before it mestesify, you know, mestesizes in a way. Um, try, somehow to put a condom over top of it. Somehow I don't know what what the right uh, terminology would be. So does anybody, uh, Sandy? I see you jumped in. Um, and, and and Suzanne, I know you you were ready to 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 help lead today, so please jump in anytime uh, you'd like to as well, even though you're Bob tonight. Um, <laughs> and I but think Jessica, um, so. Where 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 you think you know to get back to twenty? The question for yes, we know we're in a very repressive repressive time right now in a lot of ways. 
we have to sort of imagine a new world, you know, imagine, imagine a new world, you know, imagine that new world, uh, but not take ourselves too seriously, okay, because, but these are very serious situations, very, very things, so as human beings, we have to know, we have to keep humor, right, but we also, because we can't get so sardonic and, and, and dragged down by this movement that we're, we're not creating life, we need to be creating life. We need to be creating a, a integrity of creation, and that's what that's. I'm hoping that's what we, as as a community of of, of free press, can be about. Um, Lynn, I see you popped in. Do you want any more? Uh, Mariam has done a beautiful job, so we don't even need you. No, I'm kidding. I'm I'm kidding. But please uh, join in this conversation if you'd like to. So Jessica, just to finish up, where are you seeing? Last last month we we asked the same. Oh yeah, question. Oh, maybe that, last oh, month we speaker. were we were hoping to mobilize and actually show up to rally, but uh, with COVID numbers it's not safe. You know we can't fight the fight if we're sick or dead, unfortunately. And um, I mean I think the thing is right now is they forget that they work for us. The politicians work for us and they're not reminded that like I tell everybody when they ask me like what can I do and I'm like bully your local politician and that sounds awful but bully them but they work for you you pay taxes they work for you this isn't they're not royalty it's an elective it's an elected position no matter how you gerrymander and I think it's more like you know I had this problem a lot when I first started school was I would try to speak to people but I wouldn't speak to them in layman's terms that they would understand like it was kind of like if somebody talked to me like about stock markets I would not get it at all it would be a different language and I would do the same with politics but I think a lot of the problem is you have to meet people at their level and that's what I'm learning now so I try to explain it like okay well you're not okay when you're talking to like people are like, well, I'm not okay with abortion or for this. And I'm like, but so are you okay with forced birth and what that entails? And you know, if you're not okay with rape, you shouldn't be okay with forcing somebody to carry a baby that is a product of that. And the situation is different every time, but nobody goes in there for fun. Nobody goes in there because they want, as somebody who's had an abortion and is not ashamed, nobody goes in there for fun and every reason's a good reason and i always say and that reason is nobody else's damn business but i mean for change i bully politicians i tag stephanie powell and everything i can i tag her on every account i call her because she's one of the ones who introduced the abortion ban and or the trigger ban in ohio she's one of the ones and this is the thing, misogyny doesn't just apply to men. Women can internalize misogyny as well. And as a white woman, when I see other white women, especially because of proximity to power, they're one position away, it makes me mad. So bully politicians call Stephanie Powell. I think it was Eric, Hall, Eric Thomas. Um, it was one of them. Sorry, I don't have my notes right in front of me, but... Um, they introduced that, they introduced a trans ban, uh, anti-trans sports law for children. Why are you worried about children? They, you have to call, write letters, um, petitions, but I, I call a lot. I hope they hear my voice in their nightmares, but I tell everybody they work for us and that's what they forget is we don't work for you, you work for us. We pay your bills. So you regardless of Republican versus Democrat, you should be doing what the majority believes in because you are a public servant. Yeah. Sorry. No, thank you. Uh, Sandy, you've unmuted yourself. Do you want to say a little bit something? Yes, I do. Um, let's see, I'm just, I'm just actually writing what I'm going to say, but I'll still say it because I'm <laughs> important. Um, yeah, they, these people, we've been, a number of us have been there a lot they don't care what we have to say. Um, right at the time, 100, more than 100 people will speak 
in oppo opposing a bill and four or five lobbyists will speak in favor of it and it passes. This isn't once or twice, this happens, this is the, the way it works in the state house and everywhere else. So I've mentioned this before, but I didn't know how to do it and I still don't know how to do it. But if anybody is interested in um, getting together with me, um, just give me your email or whatever your address or phone number. Um, I don't know if this is possible, but what I think we need to do, these people aren't gonna change. Why should they? What they're doing works. They keep getting elected. They get all their policies passed, whether they know what they are or care what they are and how they affect others, they don't care. So we just have to get other people running in other parts of the state. Um, gerrymandering doesn't look like it's gonna stop anytime soon. As much as genuine efforts people put into it, just wholly everything they had, and it was honest, but the honesty is not winning. It, it's, it's, um, it's dishonesty that is carrying the ball these days. So if anyone, I think we've got to get these people out. And the problem is in other parts of Ohio, um, there, there is no other choice. There aren't, there's no other party running. And that's, so there's no way that other people can, that, you know, non-Republicans can win or these really right-wing people can win. So I don't know if there's anybody who has any ideas and we could at least maybe just talk about it, but I'd be happy to host some sort of meeting along those lines to see how yeah, we so can urge other have, people to run. What we have done in the past, so we're not really, you know, we're not right. going to go one way or the other with a particular person, but um, we are, we have held people summits. We've had, mm -hmm. um, progress, what is that? Um, help me, Suzanne, the name progressive. Citi the Citizens Grassroots Citizens Congress. Grassroots Congress we've done. Um, we've done several things in the past building for major elections. That is something that possibly Free Press could jump into this year and really, you know, both feet down in and bring in uh, some very important uh, voices to, to, you know, where we want to head as a state. Um, we are sort of stuck with the, uh, well, I'm not going to say that, but <laughs> I am going to say it. We're sort of stuck for four years with the, the, the districts. Um, yeah, we may win, yeah, maybe in the Supreme court. Um, I don't count on courts, uh, right now for victory. So I, for me, I don't think our sole agenda should ever be just at the state house. Yes. That's where decisions are but we need to go to where, we're, where we are at and really make sure people are converted that way too. You know, hearing things, hearing our stories, that power of those stories of, you know, I had this, I have not ha been able to have access to that. I know friends that have been detained. I know people have been deported. You know, those are kind of things that, you know, makes the story different when you start hearing that. And we need to go out from Franklin County. I've always said, us here in Franklin County, we need to be worried about Union County right next to us. If we could, if we could flip Union County by doing some organizing out there, that would be a simple thing for Franklin County to help with. Marysville, if we could just help out out there somehow, that would be great. Uh, Lynn, you just jumped on, and uh, I know Mariam spoke a little, uh, 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 quite a bit, and very, very eloquently on the struggles and. Um, of, of uh, that whole story uh, of uh, deportation and immigrant uh, life. Do you have anything about good, bad, or ugly for the 2022s? Um, one thing I'm noticing is that it's been harder to raise money for some of the campaigns that we're running. And that's whether it's a fundraising campaign, like um, there's a man his family, he was deported and his family is about to lose their home in Reynoldsburg. Um, and whether it's something like that or something like to raise money for lawyers for Reunite US, which is something that we really need. Like Miriam and I can't, we can't bring people back without lawyers, you know? Um, and it's just been harder because I think people are so tapped out. They're so, you know, they thought that we gave and gave for four years and you know, that people gave millions of dollars to races and especially at the southern border, there was a lot of money, but there was very little money coming into Ohio for 
for the legal work um, needed to support immigrants. So it's just been, I, I, we, I've definitely seen a change in, in people, the number of people being detained in Ohio. So that's good. We're not putting more families into poverty by taking the breadwinner out of the home and then, you know, making them pay expensive amounts of money for phone calls and commissary and things like that as much. But um, yeah, but I mean, one, one, I, one thing that I'm really trying to struggle with is the lack of um, interest from people that have deep pockets in, okay, now that we have a, a quote unquote friendlier administration and we might be able to do something positive. Okay. Now we really need your, your financial support to, to do something good, not just try to mitigate the bad. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of uh, progressive left of center political agenda folks are finding 20, the late of 21 and, and going into 22, 22 sort of tight on some finances. Um, so that is an issue. Um, and if so, anyone wants to write on that, that'd be very good, you know, to get, get that out there and in, into the community. Um, and again, we invite speakers to speak to the uh, salon, but we really want you to write. <laughs> That's our agenda is to get you guys to write for the free press. So please put down in, in paper what is good and what is what can happen. Um, Michael just joined us. I see Adrian, Adrian Hood, Miss Hood, you, you uh, jumped on. Thank you very much for tonight. Um, and um, hopefully uh, your new year uh, will be a good one. Um, anybody else have anything for the good of the cause? We're, we're at 750. We probably, we usually try to get the formal part done before eight and then uh, we maybe blather on about politics and other things after that. Um, anybody? Stephen, you see anything up? I I'm not really seeing. I agree, Mark. No, nope, not seeing anything. Uh -huh. uh, but thank you guys. Th this has been uh, very important. I just want you to know that we are leading into, let me try to get this up here. Uh, the second, actually the first full year, the, the year last year, January 22nd, was the first day that this uh, nuclear ban treaty came into force. Uh, so now nuclear weapons are illegal. So if you hear anybody wanting to, to, to build a, a nuclear weapon, put some handcuffs on that mother. Put, put some handcuffs on that guy because he's illegal now, okay? Um, anybody that talks crazy, put some handcuffs on him. They, you know, these politicians have to start understanding they're criminals, point blank. And we need to maybe not physically put, you know, that causes some other issues, but um, put some handcuffs on them. Politically, financially, uh, socially, uh, go to their churches and say, you know, you're not really reading the right Bible. Let me show you this. Um, whatever it is, uh, we know where these guys are. We need to go and start being good investigative journalists and start telling the stories of the repression that people are living in in Ohio and that we have another way of looking. We have another way of going. Um, Suzanne, I know you were ready to jump in if I would have had to leave out. So did you have any way you were wanting to close this off or did you put a little thinking in that at all? Because I know you were ready to jump in. Well, usually this would be the time we would open it up for other people who have announcements. Um, um, often we have Chuck or, or Kathy with some announcements, Sandy, uh, Adrian, I don't know if you have something that you would like to talk about. Or announce. I mean, anybody who's on open, you know, just um, start talking, I guess. Unmute yourself. And if you have an announcement, go ahead and we'll just uh, open it up right now. Brian, Brian, you need to say that. Don't just post it. You, you, he's got his announcement, w, WCRS and WGIS wow. fundraiser. Go ahead. Well, Suzanne said, Suzanne said, don't talk about it. Don't talk about it? She said, don't talk about it. Well, what you want to that. talk about, hey, Brian, what you want to talk about is going to be discussed at the Free Press board meeting this Monday night. And it's oh, so it's not set yet. Okay. It's probably it's not, not something yet. Yeah. Yeah. But um, WCRS had their meeting on Thursday. 
And so they like the idea. Okay, so but but what, so what far they to... raised twenty eight hundred, give or take, on that GoFundMe as of Thursday. So that was set up, and then the PSA has been running for like the last about twenty four hours on WCRS. So what you're talking about is raising money to buy a new transmitter. For 98.3. Right, right. And that's different than what you talked to me about on the email. So yeah, you go ahead and talk about this. That's not a problem. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> that. So basically what she said. What she said. And so I'm going to turn my video on on my computer so people can see my himself but yes yeah, so, so how self, much how much do you need to to raise brian i think rob said like about about four thousand is what rob okay. said and that that transmitter would then be able to to get where what, what would be the coverage do you have that that is a rob question but again that's for the 98.3 transmitter That'll do most of Franklin County, yeah. if right. not a little bit farther. Good. The ninety-eight point three. I mean, where it is now. So yeah. that's great. That's that's within reach. I would say that's within reach. So that sounds that sounds great, and uh, hopefully we we as a community can support that. Connie Hammond just put something out. Uh, Brian, were you done with that? Is, is that that's all you can speak about right now. I think right. that's, <laughs> that's that's all I know. Although Rob does have a pipe dream about a okay, we'll we'll talk about that another time. Center, but that's all they're dancing. It would involve a lot more money than a four thousand dollar transmitter. Well, Rob always has dreams, so that's great. I love I love hearing his dreams, so it's great. Connie, Connie, you wanted to, you posted in the chat uh, J January 11th, uh, please. Yeah, um, did I, our Jewish voice repeats, we're having a webinar with uh, Halid al um on uh, Tuesday, January 11th at seven. And I can't post the link, I guess, in the chat, but it is, the um, information for registering for that is on our Facebook event page. So, um, and then we have another upcoming event in in um, February that you might want to look at too. Thank you. Yeah, uh, uh, Connie, uh, I'm telling you, Suzanne's very good at gleaning out of all this mess that we do in the salon and recording it and recording it very well yeah. so i've trust she she with our help you know if, if there's anything that's not clear as you're putting it into the chat please send it to suzanne and within the next day and she can she'll recapture the the whole yeah. report and, and 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 i hope you guys are definitely looking it's in my newsletter and also okay. i pick up stuff from her transcript for my newsletter. But if you want to see that, um, this is that Ohio Immigrant Alliance book that I put oh, in the chat. You, yes. And I put yes. the link to the, um, if you go to their website, it's a little hard to find, but you, I put the link to the section of their website that tells you where the book is available and um, how to get a copy. It's really very nicely done. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Connie. And, and I, I see Mariam is, is giving you the thumbs up on that one. Um, you should be able okay. to put links in the chat. There shouldn't be any problem doing that. I don't know why it wouldn't show up. Okay, let me let me try something else then. I'll... Yeah, just try. And, and then uh, Lynn Stan saying, hey, hey, hey. And um, what what's the update from our friends at ConFest, Lynn? You're, you're muted. So Which is that Lynn? What's going to Not me. Not me. <laughs> Hoping that, um, I mean, people are meeting and, and um, some communities are starting to ramp back up. But the most important one, um, logistics has been meeting with some other um, entertainment, which is so much about the infrastructure because there cannot, some things are going to have to change because it's not the same park that it was two years ago, certainly the area around it. 
but also people are concerned about the scale of it and what is um, really what is affordable, but also what can be staffed. And that's really the biggest concern, but also if distancing is really more part of our future, then that's also part of it also. So I do encourage people, if you've been involved in any committees, to kind of get in touch with people and see what's going on. Also workshops don't have to wait till June, right, Chuck? We can do we can do spirit and purpose confess workshops all the time and um, presentations and panels. Fantastic. So, Lynn, it sounds like live is what we're talking about. Say that again. What confess may be live this year. Um, that is the hope. That's okay. definitely the hope. That's, that's and good to hear. you know, but it's still pretty early and certainly. But so yes, people are doing it. But um, we're also trying to. Um, set up ways for people to get together to kind of get caught up on Confess, see what kind of things they would like to continue or not continue. I mean, I think that's great. We have that opportunity to really kind of recreate things. And like I said, Spirit and Purpose, part of Confess is it is year round. It can be year round. It's right here. This is also part of what that is, the spirit and purpose of Confess. Well, June's going to be now. I mean, uh, J- June is now. It's, it's January, but it's going to be June. Uh, Mary Jane, you had so a, I, would, a, I would think for at least you the, want to talk about too. the last six, okay. next six weeks are going to be important. So if anybody has comments on, um, uh, on the infrastructure, then um, please put them out there. Fantastic. Thanks, Lynn. Mary Jane, do you had some uh, uh, courage uh, in cannabis? Yes, this is a new book uh, that is spearheaded by Dr. Bridget Williams. If, if you're familiar with her or not, she's a physician, a, a medical doctor here uh, in the Columbus area who is certified to recommend marijuana in Ohio. But uh, she's really kind of larger than life, if you will. She decided to also take on this project, which brings together 18 authors. I'm, I'm honored to be one of them. You know that I write a lot of, uh, uh, for the free press in particular. And I wrote an article for this particular compilation. And I think you'll find it fascinating because it, it's uh, 18 authors. And they're not, they're many are from Ohio, but a number of them are from uh, other parts of the country, and I think one is at least is from Canada as well. But there, these are to- stories that uh, we were talking about storytelling, the importance of storytelling. This is storytelling for cannabis and how cannabis has affected people's lives in various different ways. Um, I, you know, I could go on and on about it, but I think that it would be a nice uh, touch to uh, first of all make make sure everybody gets a copy of it. You can see how you could do that in the chat. But also, if you're interested in panel discussions, um, I think we can help in that regard, too, because we've got some authors both in the local area and even could bring some into uh, Compass or whatever to have, I think, a very nice discussion and also sell some books. So anyway, uh, just keep that in mind, please, and check it out at the Courage in Cannabis website, as I put in the chat. So it's really easy. It's courageincannabis.com. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Bob, Rain, you have your hand up. Yeah. COVID has really changed the work of doing the calendar and the free press. And I'm very proud to announce that a protest by an animal rights group at a rodeo is actually going to happen. I've been following that event for probably 18 months. It'll be in rodeo at the um, nationwide um, arena. And this group planned it in September. And I think that was pre-scheduled from an earlier day. And I've been tracking it, it's actually coming up. So if you want to protest a rodeo on January 15th, six o'clock, um, the information will appear soon in the calendar. Thank you. Yeah, and anybody with upcoming <clears throat> events, send them to Bob Ring. He will get them up and we get them on the free press. And that gets out to 100 billion people. Did you know that? We are to 100 billion people. Did you know that? Yes. <laughs> well, hyperbole is what we're all about right now. So, right? I mean, in our in all our politics, we're <laughs> hyperbolic. So, why don't we say, why don't we join the crew? Chuck, uh, Lynn was, Chuck, Lynn, yeah, just uh, a, Lynn a, was opening for you. Go ahead. Just a quick comment. Uh, Kathy has been, and, and uh, her husband have been a little bit under the weather 
do them. Mm. I haven't got the re results from a COVID test, but um, right, I've been working with her over the weekend. Normally our update that I do every Friday uh, comes out Friday morning and it didn't, mm. and it won't come out until it looks like tomorrow morning. So we had to make some changes. We have a new system, constant contact. Uh, I'm an old dog. I'm trying to learn the new tricks to how to make that work. Uh, so anyway, uh, I just wanted to say that Kathy is going to do first Fridays, an event uh, uh, at noon, I think on first Friday, first Friday of the month. So the first one in February, I think it's February 3rd. Uh, it's an opportunity to connect with things that are happening, uh, hopefully in a positive way in Columbus. Uh, uh, so that's that's happening, and uh, mark your calendars, and that'll be in the update when it comes out tomorrow morning. And uh, I'm going to be hosting a thing on uh, called Simply Share, which is a way to share what you're reading, what you're watching, what you're thinking about, what you think of uh, Don't Look Up, or you know, it could be uh, salon type things that we're talking about here. People want to share. Uh, what's up with them? Uh, great. I think we're doing it on. Uh, three o'clock on the Sunday the 23rd. The final uh, system for, you know, the date and time might change, but that's the first one to kind of get it started. We'll do once a month, we'll do a, uh, I guess it's kind of like a Simply Living, a Simply Share, similar to the salon type idea, a little bit more coming out of our books. We've had a book, uh, book share uh, system where we actually read particular books and discussed them. This is a way to talk about what's on your brain, what you're watching, et cetera. So, Chuck, are those, are those virtual events or in person? Yes, right now they're virtual. The hope is that uh, we can go back to our Cohatch office. We, we have the capability to meet in there and do a hybrid event. We did one that way. So we can do both virtual, and but right now they're virtual, uh, both of them. So Hopefully we'll be able to do more hybrid, which is cool because, you know, a lot more people can participate that don't come into our little boardroom office where we have that TV set up so we can do the, the hybrid. Thanks, Chuck. Thank you. I've just posted up here. Uh, we had David Swanson on last week and, or last month, and he uh, was talking about uh, with had a good dialogue with with uh, Morgan uh, uh, um, Harper and uh it did bring sort of a, a gap that's out there that in most congressional uh, candidacies, they don't have anything on foreign policy. So he came and written, wrote this. And so we have this, if anybody's interested, I'll post that out. Um, so we, 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 we do have new resources and there will be much coming out. Columbus, Ohio probably is not very swingy, but Ohio, uh, is definitely not red, but it's probably purple. I mean, <laughs> it has it has a lot of mix to it. Um, we try to figure out where we can make access points uh, into the politics and report what's going on on the front lines. And uh, so Lynn and Mariam, please, you guys, you're not in Columbus too often, so come out and tell us more what's going out in Trump land. Because <laughs> you guys are in Trump land in a lot of ways. Um, I, it's an old term, I know, but uh, let's, <laughs> let's know that Central Ohio, Central Ohio, um, we, were, we were blessed in the past with a visit from uh, uh, Howard Zinn. And this, this year is his uh, 100th year. He was born 100 years ago. So they're doing a series uh, of online classes, the Zen Education Project. I encourage you to try to sign up for some of these. I've signed up for a few. But they're going to do in October a major um, recollection of his work. And I don't know if you know Howard Zinn, but Howard Zinn is, is, is a very important political theorist for uh, many of the folks on the left. Uh, um, he asked me, Mark, did I know about the new party? I said, yeah, but it's not existent in Columbus, Ohio. But that was before we had PDA, before Move to Amend, before uh, uh, so many things, uh, even before um, 
uh, DSA was is, is re-strengthened. It was here, but it wasn't very strong. There's, there's many other uh, socialist alliance, social action, you know, all the other organizations that are starting to come there. We are starting to gain in Columbus a potential of being fairly organized. But that doesn't mean Ohio is there. So we need to really understand our strength in Columbus and expand out to link and coalesce with I was with, on a uh, web with um, Marianne Williamson. I'm not very much with her politics, but she did mention one thing. She said, our cells inside our human, humanity, in our, inside our human body, they coalesce all the time, right? To, do, to, to, to defend their body. You know, she was talking mostly about COVID. It's, 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 it's sort of re uh, developing community to resist that thing. So we, as, as human beings, that's, it's natural to us to coalesce and resist the, 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 the repression that's, that is out there. Um, that's, I, for this month, I'm calling it repression. I'll call it something else differently uh, in the future. But I, I, that was sort of the theme I wanted to go with this tonight, um, is how are we, as, as a left of center, progressive, intuitive, intellectual community, wanting to write about what's going to go into 2022. So thank you again for everybody. We're at 810. Anybody have any final words? Chuck, thank you so much for being here in 2022. Hopefully we're, yeah, go ahead, Chuck. Do you, you you're viewed at it. Like we, that's the famous word in the 2020. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to say, uh, on, I wear another hat. I'm on the advisory committee in Northland. Uh, and they are trying to become the diversity center for Central Ohio. And uh, I want to make sure I want to thank Mariam. That's awesome work. And I think that if she's in, probably already in contact with Alice Fuller, Jenny Leal, these are people that are heading up Elevate Northland, elevatenorthland.org. And they would be a great resource to connect with around the issues with immigration and uh, to get the word out. We've just hired a new uh, director. We've got an opportunity to finally get a lease on a building so we can have a physical center. We have relationships with the uh, performing uh, arts center that already is in Northland on uh, Morse Road there. But uh, in addition, uh, I would like to see you know that connection uh, more aware in our community to see what's going on in Northland there's so many locally owned businesses started by new Americans who are uh, great entrepreneurs. And so I invite people to uh, check out the Global Mall and uh, uh, have, have some contact with some of the great uh, ethnic restaurants in Northland. So I'm just putting that out there for this community to be aware and, uh, and for Mariam to connect with them and make sure that uh, we can tell these stories because they're fantastic stories. and. Uh, We've, we've done an annual meeting uh, or a, an event where we tried to start doing some of these stories. We did a few, but it would be great to do uh, uh, more of those. So kind of like our own little story core, you know, so people can have a venue to tell their story, get that recorded and put that out there. So, so few people are aware of these amazing, you know, the kids in our schools. Uh, I don't know, just in end of rant, but think about oh, that. Oh, that's that's exactly you're right on tune with what the chorus has been singing tonight um that you know we, the power is within us to change this repression that we're faced uh we are we are the resistance movement along with a whole lot of other folks out there that aren't you know we're just 25 30 people uh right now but we have a lot of friends that are out there right um winnie wants to say something Hey Mark, how do you can you tell us more about the uh, how, the Zen education classes that we could access online? Because I looked on my phone, I can't figure out what it is. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll make sure uh, Suzanne gets that in the final report, and I'll send it to you directly. Um, Mariam, your hands up. Yes, so I just wanted to thank everybody for listening to the stories that we have. And I wanna invite anyone who wants to write a paper about the work that we do and the people who 
don't have a voice because we need the press to tell those stories. The stories need to come out so the American people and the public can hear about those separations. Um, that we have that the press is the only only voice that we have. So we're inviting anyone who wants to write a story about deportation and family separation and the goal that we want, which is family reunification. We are you're welcome to reach out to us. We want those stories to come out and them to be published. The the successful cases of people who are reunited were, were stories that were publicized that was on the press, that were on documentaries in Netflix. Those stories made an impact in, in American people's lives. And there's hundreds of stories like that, stories like that in the US. So we need the press to, to, to write those stories and to, for them to come out. So thank you. if thank anyone you. wants to write a paper, you're welcome to reach out to us. Thank you. But we also, it, it's sort of, it, it, we, we, yes, we'll do that. But we also want the, the, the first person stories not for us to tell the first story person, because that's a third story. We want folks to be able, we want more and more voices to be part of the free press community, if you want to you hear, hear what I'm saying. We want not to be the, the, the arbitrator of the voice. We want the voice to be amplified. So if you have folks that are willing to, and we're not, we have plenty of people that can help edit. And, and don't be caught up in the that it's like not good English, whatever the word, whatever the, the limitation may be. And, and if it's if it's we want to share voices that are from the first voice as well. So please, it's sort of yes, yes, we can write more about it. And yes, we were we should and we going to I hope find that that capability of writing that that article. But you as well, please offer and find those voices that we can help amplify. And and uh, like like you guys did with with that book, with the with the, the, the work with that movie that happened, the documentary. If you can send that link to Suzanne Lynn about the documentary, do you have that quickly at hand? We um, is he talking about the one that we're doing now, or the one on Netflix? The one past and the one you're about to do okay i know I, well, that the, that one is not quite done yet i know yeah we don't have that one I, i'll get you the link for the netflix um episode and um i think mary raised a good point and mark you know you're right too and what we can do is we're asking people to submit comments to the federal government we can take some of those comments and send them to you if you want to republish them because they're going to be people in their own voices, you know, talk, talking directly to Biden or to the task force about what they want. So we'll, we will go through and um, look at the ones that we have submitted and send you some ones that are from Ohio. That, that'd be very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. I think Suzanne is nodding her head and is very excited about that. <laughs> um, anybody else? Michael, you good? The 2022. I, I haven't seen Michael for a while, and we already got our Confest uh, 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 report. Okay, so no, I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah. Okay, can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, I, you know, I was involved. Uh, that's my dog. I'm a little busy with my dog, and I retired, and so I'm making a documentary on a, an 81 year old jazz drummer, Wally Mitchell. Come out uh, sometime to Dick's Den and hear him. But one thing that always concerns me is this debate on affordable housing. And I'll be very brief on uh, a guy named Jason Reese, who was an activist who moved out of the South end of Columbus, posted about affordable housing. And um, I backed him up by saying, how can the prices of the homes that are going to be where the garden was, uh, across the street garden, uh, 250 to 350,000? Well, this guy that owns Arch City, development, uh, Brian Higgins writes, well, um, if you can afford a $52,000 home, if you have two people bringing in an income of $52,000, and that's about, that's 30% of your income. And um, I realized that in their discussions, when we discuss things like this, they're not including that you might have, want, might want to have insurance on that home that you might want to pay your taxes on that home, that you 
may have a car or you have transportation costs or babysitting costs. So just to remind everybody, when you are in those discussions, I'm going to reply to him tonight or tomorrow and say, I think they're leaving out, you know, uh, all these other expenses. And they're very illusioned and they make us disillusioned, but they're delusional to think that um, uh, houses that will sell for 250, 350,000 is really going to help that nurse's aid or the person that is, um, you know, working at the restaurant um, or a school bus driver, whatever. Um, I just wanted to say that. And I consulted with Joe and Joe pointed out, Joe Motel, that, oh, this guy owns, uh, you know, Art City Development. I looked that up and they own a lot of properties in the bottoms and here on the Near East side. So uh, yep. keep fighting those people. And Children's Hospital is now jumped to the south side of Livingston and they will buy the property where Shane's Gourmet Catering is and probably Art Outside the Lines is in that block and Superior Home Maintenance, who's the guy along with Skip Weiler that has the uh, land. They're just putting flags down and they're gonna start building houses perhaps soon. So stay involved in that, I am. So, and the gerrymandering thing, keep fighting. It, yeah, it, we just had we just had a major uh, uh, discussion. The zone. I heard it. Side, I was side, on side. my phone eating. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, we just had that. We just hosted. I'm going to be written up for that. But oh well. I I thought it was an important meeting. I thought it was an important meeting. So I, I'll take the dive on that one. Um, no. So uh, thank you. Yeah, health care, housing immigration, women's rights, uh, workers' uh, uh, status. These are all going to be uh, on the planks. These are going to be planks of the platform that we're going to have to uh, defend and push forward uh, because those are going to be the planks that are going to be, uh, you're going to see start the corners being turned off and, and turned down on some of those in, in, in the politics that you'll see in 2022. And so we need to really keep expanding our understanding of what affordability, accessibility, uh, uh, appropriateness, you know, and timeliness. You know, those are very important things in all of what we're talking about because you can't wait to eat. You can't wait when it's raining to have shelter. You can't uh, wait 20 years to have your family reunited. Um, you know, these are some serious life changing, you know, you always, this is our open enrollment for city uh, employees, open enrollment for healthcare. What life changing situations are, that could change your healthcare? I mean, some of these things are, are diametric, are di they just, they are definitely <laughs> uh, life changing. Uh, I, I was going to be very hyperbolic, but I decided not to do that because um, we need to maintain not to be hyperbolic, I think, in a lot of ways, um, because of the voice that's out there. Yeah, Chuck. Okay, one more quick thing. I put a link in there to the Homes Guarantee uh, Program. Yes, thank you. Is, uh, so if you check that out, it's awesome. Uh, we almost had a Democratic Socialist mayor of Buffalo who ran on the Homes Guarantee uh, proposal. Uh, they've got, they just, they have a, they were on MSNBC. Uh, the website includes a, uh, a new video describing what they're trying to do. Uh, it would be great to bring that to Columbus or at least make a bring attention to that proposal. Maybe the free press could put something about that. I know I should write it, but <laughs> whatever. Uh, but anyway, well, that, send, send it to Bob, at least get it on our calendars. Those, those kind of things, you know, those are, can be calendar events and you don't have to write a whole article. That, that's the other thing. Yeah, yeah, I don't you're think right. you have I, to write a 19,000 page <laughs> thesis on anything. We can, we can adapt anything that someone brings to us and make a story of it. Okay. We I can hear you. Do that. We can I, do I know that. I'm, I'm just okay. throwing this out because uh, we, we actually, she, you know, the, the Democratic mayor we thought we were going to have didn't, you know, the guy ran a write in campaign and the Democratic Party got rid of him, rid of the socialist threat. So, anyway, well, um, it would be great to bring attention to our uh, city council 
uh, that that this is something that you know they're constantly struggling with what other uh, chipping away at the edges they can do. Now that they've discovered we have a housing problem, as every city does. Anyway, there's no threat of socialism in the city of Council of Columbus. <laughs> Not <laughs> yet. <laughs> that's why we're here, right? <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah, that's what we want. Some 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 push that way. It would be great. Um, if you're if Michael, you're not social, you been with, uh, Stephen. Yes, yeah, Stephen. Michael, you've been with if us. If you're not social, you must be anti-social. So uh, take your pick. There you go. Thank yes. you. Yes, Michael Kokonis. I know you 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 look like you're all like in the control booth. Uh, Who me? Kokonis. Oh. Yeah, I did want to ask Chuck, can you give a brief um, synopsis of Home Guarantee Corporation, what that would do here in Columbus? Yeah, um, and take away the socialist label or the social label. It's uh, a proposal that says, hey, we on the local level can spend our tax dollars on public housing, but we could do it in a way that is uh, that works. We've had lots of experience with public housing that didn't work. We had great public housing that we tore down, <laughs> won't get into that story in Columbus, but uh, imagine like, a, I, I'm throwing this out, like a campus, you know, where we have a variety of, of housing situations. We have basketball court, we have uh, uh, opportunities to engage the, the, you know, a common eating area, kind of a co-housing for, to really build a community of people that uh, need housing and uh, not do it in a way that uh, you have to beg for a voucher and then it's, you know, I won't get into that, but check the website out. It's great stuff. Uh, and, you know, it's, it should be a guarantee. It's like, I saw something the other day about food, you know, we have to pay for food. We can't have free food. No. Okay. I'm a, I, I will call myself a communitarian. You know, what kind of a community is it that has some people that don't have enough to eat, don't have a house, <laughs> whatever. And then, mm. and then the the leaders of the the community make it illegal to give free stuff out. <laughs> yeah. So that that's, yeah that that's that is a discussion that's out there. We we've had that debate and and battle here in Columbus, Ohio as well, sure. um, with food not bombs trying to give out. But now it's it's with it's beyond that discussion. We now we need to get beyond that um, with community gardening uh, uh, aspects with with solar solar community collectives um, that are out there. You know, our visioning needs to be beyond just uh, charity and survival. We, we need to really vision where the society is heading and, and uh, be bold about that, I think. And uh, if not hyperbolic, at least be bold. <laughs> um, so that, that, that's my encouragement to the, 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 the free press so that, oh, Rick is just getting on. Does he got nothing else to do? And he's getting on here now. Uh, <laughs> um, I have asked a few folks to start thinking about next year, next months. Uh, we want. It is uh, Black World Month, um, but that's not the only reason why we're doing this. We we have done this many times, but there are, we want to sort of look at uh, a where are we at in racial justice and how do how is reporting going on how how are we as a community uh uh representing and speaking with and being in voice with uh others that are in this community uh the new americans is a great example but um uh, uh, long-standing uh multi-generational families have been hurt and harmed by the society that it exists uh, because no guarantees on housing, health, food, education. You know, we can go through the whole gamut. Um, foreign policy. <laughs> Let us remember the elephant, okay? Remember the elephant. One trillion dollars is being stolen from us every year and more than that, actually. But on the books, trillion dollars for military. And that has created a relationship with the US and the world that we represent just by being here. We're here, we represent it. How do we sort of 
demarcate ourselves differently than what that trillion dollars represents. I'm not going to get too deep into all that, but we also have the next 10 years another trillion dollars being spent on developing nuclear weapons. So that's why I said at the beginning of the meeting, we need to start arresting some of these folks because they're criminals now. Nuclear war is illegal now. We need to arrest them. Arrest them socially, mentally, fiscally, everything which way we can. And if we got to put uh, handcuffs on them, do that as well. Uh, and we are battling some some serious repressive. I'm going to use that word again because that's my use that that's my word this week. Um, legislators that want to attack the right to display lamentation. Do you hear what I'm saying? That, that's, a, that's a Christian expression, but sorrow, uh, anger, um, expectation of new, they're trying to make that illegal, to publicly describe that lamentation that people need to have in these times. Um, so I just, let's, let's constantly try to be those creative journalists that we say we're going to be, to be as, as Bob used to be, that investigative journalist that he's, he's, he, he, he kept telling us to be, that we need to find more investigative journalists, and be that contemporary journal that we can be, that free press. And please write, think, encourage other people to write, and send them to Suzanne. <laughs> and she will edit it down to a, to a manageable method when she can. <laughs> Suzanne, do you want to end us at all? And how's Bob and everybody? Uh, I know you, I didn't mention it last time. I, it was too close that you did lose your father. And um, many of us are going through that. There's no one way that anybody responds to that. And I just thank you for being here and continuing to press me to what's the idea for this month? What's the idea for this? that? <laughs> Continue to stay on me. That's very helpful. Thank you. Do you want to say any last words, Suzanne, or first words for the next month? Because, okay. Thank you. Uh, Anybody else got some good? Rick, you just jumped on. Uh, you know, you, you're fresh, so we're going to pass the baton to you. And uh, a lot of folks are going to be jumping off for a second uh, until the next month. February 12th, I believe, is uh, the second um, uh, Saturday of, of February. We'll be on again. Um, and we're going to look at um, racial justice and uh, uh, sort of a collective thinking of where does this community step into that okay so uh thank you everybody uh be careful be safe um suzanne go ahead if you got things i see your voice your face is up big right now so it's like they want you to talk <laughs> zoom wants you to talk <laughs> All right. well it's nice to see everybody thanks for coming thanks. And yeah. uh, if you have ideas of um, subjects for, for future salons, send them to me or, and to Mark. Uh, yeah. Keep listening to WGRN. And we are proud WCRS. of WCRS <laughs> and all the podcasts and keep keep getting hit in the Facebook, keep, hit, keep doing the website, uh, keep sending articles if you can, write, you know, write a 400 page thing no no 400 word just a 400 word thing um even a 200 word whatever you want to do if you want to write a 400 page that'd even be better too you know get deep into it we, we can do things now that we're on internet you know guess what we are much more even more expandable than we were when we we're printed uh hopefully we'll come back printed someday in the future but that, that's probably not going to happen anytime soon but um there you if go. you want to, if you want to do a stream of consciousness thing, you can get open a Google Doc if you're into Google and Chrome. Some people aren't, and you can turn your microphone on and just talk. 
and the computer will hear it. And then, it, you know, we have transcripts for the show. The show has been recorded and put on Facebook and uh, you'll get a follow up email to check out the resources and what happened here. Thanks. Fantastic. I'm going to end the recording probably. Yeah, that's that's probably.